a luridly pink LED lamp. I chose the pink one from the colours they had because it seemed like the correct thing to do and it perfectly matches the hideous pink lamp holder. Let's plug it in and see what the power consumption is. I'm using the anti this time with a slightly dimmer display. Uh, it is lit pink. Um, and the power consumption is 5.2 watts, um, power factor 0 0.6, which is typical. And I'm wondering, is this using white LEDs under a pink cover, or is it actually magenta LEDs for maximum efficiency? There's only one way to find out, and that's to open it. So let's open it. I shall get the other stuff out of the way, and we shall dismember it. So I'm going to slip the spudger. Let's uh, zoom down this so you can marvel at the shredded flesh when everything goes horribly wrong. So I'm going to slip that down there. I'm going to just work my... Oh, that wasn't hard. Oh, it's white LEDs. Oh, it's got a, a little boost. Uh, I should say it's got a little buck regulator on it. That was unexpected. Also unexpected is the fact the circuit board is just not central at all, is it? Is it just glued in randomly? What is that big, huge blob of solder? This is not... Oh, is the wire coming through from the back? Uh, this is not made to a very high standard. Nonetheless, let's take a picture of it and take a look at the circuitry. One moment, please. Reverse engineering is complete. Let's explore. Things worthy of note. The reason the circuit board is so skewed off centre is because they've used a base that has a central hole, which is quite normal for this style of fitting. But because this circuit board has a hole off centre, they've basically just squished it over as far as they could and then glued it in place. It's also worth mentioning that the inside of this is matte and the outside is gloss. Is that just coincidental or is it something to do with light transmission? You know, perhaps absorbing the light from the inside and then uh, emitting it well from the outside. Not really sure. It's also cold white LEDs, which is a bit of a shame because they don't really match the pink too well in the sense they could have made it more efficient, perhaps by using a warmer color. Let's take a look at the circuit board. It's very simple. There's not even a fusible resistor, as there often is at the back of these. Everything is in the front of the circuit board. We've got the live and neutral coming on, and they pretty much go straight over to the bridge rectifier. The output from the bridge rectifier goes to this capacitor, which is a 2.2 megafarad, 400 volt death beam capacitor, and then to this dedicated LED driver chip with an inductor 152, 1520s, 1500 microhenries, which is about 1.5 millihenry. Well, it is 1.5 millihenry. There is another tiny little capacitor, a very ungenerous 1 nanofarad capacitor there, uh, and a 2.61 ohm sense resistor. This is the one that if you had one of these and you wanted to hack it, by increasing the value of that resistor, it should theoretically scale down the uh, output current. Let's take a look at the uh, actual data sheet from the manufacturer, which is quite handy. Here is the data sheet from the manufacturer. There's the incoming supply without those resistors, uh, without resistor, the bridge rectifier, the 2.2 megafarad capacitor going down to the uh, chip. The positive goes out to the LEDs and the the miserable one nanofarad capacitor across them. There's the inductor and there's the sense resistor. Now, normally, I would expect a circuit like this to have what's called a freewheel diode. And the freewheel diode would normally be mounted between here. Let me show you why. The way this works is that the chip will turn on its MOSFET and current will start flowing through the LEDs, but will be limited by the inductor. And although it's a very small inductor, it's still significant at the frequencies of operation this operates at. So it will limit the current to a degree, but the current will gradually increase until it's sensed at a certain threshold by this 2.61 ohm resistor and the sort of voltage that develops across it. Then that will turn off. And normally what happens is that because this was, say, positive and, uh, and it was being pulled down to negative, when it's turned off, the field in that will collapse and this end will go positive and this end will go negative. And what happens there, they usually have this free wheel diode that actually diverts the current round. So it's a very efficient and both the charging and collapsing of the magnetic field contributes to the LED current. Um, however, I got a meter. Hold on, I'll do it right now. I shall get the meter in right now. Let's put it to diode test. And although the data sheet did not show this at all, there is a diode between the positive pin 
and the output. Let me see if I can actually make a connection here. Let's see if I can even... Let's see if I can just screw this up completely. I'm struggling to get a connection on here. There is, there's our diode. Uh, 0.57... 6 volts or so, uh, that's a standard silicon diode. Um, and that is inside here. So that, although it's not shown in the drawing, I've just dropped the meter, although it's not shown in the drawing, that diode is there. And it's not even shown in the actual, the schematic in the data sheet that shows the rough block uh, system of the inside. I thought they'd have included that just to show that it's not needed, theoretically. But that is it. Uh, note that this is a pin 7, but in reality, it's an 8-pin type chip, but pin 7 is completely missing, so they've just labelled that 7. I'd call that pin 8, because it's in position, pin 8, but you know what, that's what they called it. The chips themselves uh, and the LEDs, there are 6 LEDs, there are 2 chip LEDs, uh, so 36 volts. That differs greatly to the approach taken by many modern lamps, that the bulk of the voltage is dropped across the LEDs and then it's a simple linear regulator. That makes me think this is a much older style of circuit. In, if anything, it would be nice to see uh, the cover just basically put on something like this, and uh, that would be a much more efficient approach to doing it. It would be more modern, if you will. But that's it. I am disappointed, particularly given that they've used fairly standard LEDs, that they didn't just use magenta LEDs, where all the light output was in the colour that matched the cap. That would have made it so much more efficient. But this is what we have. So it's an interesting little circuit. It's neat enough. It's not really, it's not become my favourite lamp by any stretch of imagination. It just has those little flaws that, that rile me, the, most notably the, over, well, the old-fashioned, overcomplicated circuitry and not using the LEDs that match the colour of the cover for maximum efficiency. They're just basically your generic cold white for all the colours. But that is it. The mystery pink lamp has now been explored and answers have been God.